Have you ever played that game where you ask yourself, if you were to live on a desert island or to go to a desert island, what would you take with you? Assuming that there wouldn't be much space on the island. You'd be limited in your luggage, and you'd be there by yourself. In a way, that's what you're doing every time you meditate. As the Buddha said, you're supposed to make yourself an island. And what are you going to have on this desert island? What companionship? What treasures? And as thoughts come up as you're trying to stay with your breath, you have to ask yourself, is this a desert island thought or is this just a garbage thought, a thought that I could entertain if I had a large house with lots of room for all kinds of thoughts and all kinds of things, and a whole pack train to carry my luggage. Because that's where most of our minds are. They're not desert island minds. They're They're like those huge garbage heaps you see outside of Manila or Bangkok. And there are people who go sorting through the garbage heaps and they find some good things, but there's an awful lot of garbage. But here when we sit and meditate, we're trying to make ourselves an island. And the island the Buddha recommends is, as we chanted just now, that the Sutta on the Path factor of right mindfulness, keeping track of the body in and of itself, ardent, alert, and mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world, or feelings in and of themselves, mind in and of itself, mental qualities in and of themselves. That's our island. And what are you going to take on that island? Hopefully things that don't clutter it up. Things that don't sink your island. So a good way to phrase the question is, what kind of mind would you like to take along on your island? Because there's no companion more constant than your mind. And you have no treasures that are more yours than the mind. And so what treasures do you have? And what kind of companion do you have in here, or companions? And meditation is a good way of sorting them out. To throw away all the fool's gold and keep just the genuine gold and to throw away the fools and keep the wise people. And so when a thought comes up, ask yourself, what kind of thought is this? Is this someone you want on your island, or is this someone you want to leave behind? When you're looking for an island that even death cannot overcome. Because death, when it comes, is like a sudden evacuation order. Sudden, absolute, no time to pack your bags. It's just you. And so all you have, really, is your skill set, the companions you have in your mind, the, the treasures you have in your mind. It's like the story of Joseph thrown into a well, bound and naked, bound with ropes. He gets fished out of the well by some traders. They buy him from his brothers and take him off to Egypt. He finds himself in Egypt. He's old to be a slave. He has no choice in the matter. And all he had was his skill set. 
unfortunately, had, his, had some good skills. He could read. He was fluent. He knew how to charm people with his words. And he knew how to keep his mind buoyant. When you read the story, this is one of the characteristics that you see is most striking, even when he was down in the well after the initial terror of finding himself bound in a well, likely to die. He was able to keep his spirits up when he goes to Egypt becomes a slave. Partifar's wife ex accuses him of having attacked her. He finds himself in prison. Again, he's able to keep his spirits up. In other words, he was able to keep his energy going. So when opportunities presented themselves, he was able to apply his persistence, his energy, all of his efforts, all of his skills to make the most of those opportunities. That's an important quality we want to build into our minds. In Pali, the term for that is pasada. It goes together with sangwega. Sangwega is the realization that life, even though it seems to be going along smoothly, is not always going to go along smoothly. It's like walking on a tightrope over an abyss. You could slip at any time. Which is why you have to be careful, why you have to be heedful, why you have to be very choosy in what kind of luggage you have, what kind of treasures and companionship you encourage in your mind. Knowing that when everything else gets stripped away, you will have something good to depend on. So the sanguine is what forces you to be honest and strict with yourself, and the basada is what gives you the confidence that this is going to be worth it, that no matter how bad things get, there is a way out. So those are two, two of the treasures you want to keep in, your, keep in your luggage to take with you on the island. So on the one hand, you can sort through the garbage, and on the other hand, you realize that there are jewels, there are valuable qualities, valuable friends you want to have in your mind. And here is your opportunity to develop them as you sit here and meditate. So look at the various voices going through the mind right now, which ones are helpful, which ones are not. Which ones are true friends? Which ones are false friends? And be very picky about what you're going to take along on this island. And if you choose wisely, you find that you've got a situation where you can survive. It's not like you're sitting there under the palm tree waiting for a little bottle to come or a ship to come. You look inside your luggage, you look inside the mind, you find you've got all the treasures you need. So as you go through this life, you're well prepared for whatever life throws at you, and you'll be prepared for whatever death throws at you. So learn how to recognize the treasures inside, the, the garbage inside. And the garbage is very appealing. It doesn't even look like garbage. But when you start thinking more absolute terms, okay, is this something you really want to take with you? You find that one question right there pairs away, peels away a lot of things. So you're not loaded down with excess baggage. 
because it's not the case that if you have a lot of money, you can pay an excess baggage fee. They just strip it away from you. They don't even give you the chance to go back and pick up your bags. It's just what you have with you right at that point. That's what you take with you. So if the mind is well stocked, and you've been training good voices in the mind, so when things get down, you can lift your spirits, as the Buddha says, knowing how to gladden the mind when it needs gladdening, how to steady the mind when it needs steadying, and how to liberate the mind when it needs liberating. These are skills we learn as we meditate, and they're skills that will serve us in good stead. so that our island is not a barren place to be. But it really is something special, something that rises above any flood. And we don't have any sense of lack at all. 